Today I'm going to show you this shader setup I came up with. Uh, it's a tiling node and you can remove shapes at random. You could also shuffle through different seeds. Uh, you could change the background color. You could remove those lines in the middle there. Uh, you could also remove everything if you wanted. It's kind of like a poor man's scatter node. Less complicated, less functional. You could bring everything back. You could also change the uh, shape that you're tiling there as well. So um, yeah, a couple options there. Uh, I just tried to create a simple version of Simon Tom's scatter. So I'll show you how I did that. To start off, let's delete our default cube. I'm going to bring in a plane. I'm going to change the whole middle screen to my shader editor, change the top right to my 3D viewport. I'm going to scroll across with my mouse wheel. Just click these off so I can clear the, see this a little more clearly. Hold down Z and move my mouse up and go into rendered mode. Hit N in the middle of this screen to get rid of that shelf on the right. Let's go ahead and select this material here that was made for our default cube. Let's just call this Toot Mat, just like that. I'm going to delete this principled BSDF here and bring in a texture coordinate node. Let's go ahead and place that here. Let's just remind ourselves what it looks like when it's coming out of object. It's just these four colors here with the origin in the middle there. Let's go ahead and plug a separate XYZ in there and just place it here. And I'm going to create a circle really quick with some math nodes. I'm going to bring in a math node and change it to power and change this exponent to 2 and uh, duplicate it there, plug Y into that other base and duplicate it one more time and change it to add. We'll just add these two together. I'm going to do one more thing and just tighten up the circle by changing a square root node right after there. And then I'm going to bring in two mix RGBs so we can control that fall off there. So let's change this first one to color burn. Let's change this color to black and then let's change the second one to color dodge and change that color to white. And now we have a handy way to control the size of the black and the gradient. So uh, the way that we can get this to tile pretty easily is by bringing in a vector math node. And this is a, a math node here that, uh, you know, instead of these ones here just applying to one variable like x or y, this actually applies to all three variables. So that's why I'm putting it up a little further up the chain here so that it can still apply to all three at once there. And I could change this to multiply and change these all to the same value, like 4. But uh, there's an easy way to do that if you're changing them all the same way. And that's just change this to scale. So I'm just going to change this to 4. That does the same thing. We can see here on the image on the right, it uh, basically changes it to a smaller circle because all of those gray values were multiplied by 4. Everything got a little higher in the range, you know, closer to 1, which is white. So uh, let's look at this scale as well. We can see these colors just got brighter. So I'm going to add one more vector math node in here after this one and change it to fraction. And that basically sets all these sections from like 0 to 1, 0 to 1, 0 to 1 over and over again in the x and the y direction. So to correct for this and bring our circles into the middle here, I'm going to bring in a mapping node and just place it here after the fraction. And if I move the x and the y values negative, it kind of goes to the right spot there. And if I go to negative 0.5 on both of those there, looks like it's in the middle. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to come over here to the color burn and turn this down a little bit to 3 and then turn, turn this factor on the color dodge up to 0.9 so we get uh, less of a gradient there. So at this point I wanted to try and make kind of a scatter type setup and I don't know if you've seen the scatter node that Simon Tom's made but uh, I tried looking in, inside and it's really really complex so I just want to try and make a simpler version where I basically scatter circles across this in a random configuration. And I came up with something here and I'm just going to show you what that is. It involves adding in a Voronoi texture here. Let's plug object into vector there. I'm going to set the scale to 4 and turn the randomness down to 0. Let's see what's going on there. I'm going to just uh, view that there. So we can see it's not quite close enough to the edge there. So I'm going to bring in a mapping node here and instead of negative 0.5 I'm going to change these both to negative 0.12 just like that. And that's close enough there. We might change it later if uh, we can make it match up a bit better but that looks pretty good so far. So to check if this is right here I'm going to bring in a color ramp and just put it right here. Flip it around and bring the black down to 0.47 just like this. I'm going to change this to constant just like that. And instead of Euclidean, we're going to want Chebby Chev because that gives us these straight lines here. And we're going to mix this with that square root right there. So let's see what that looks like. Let's change the mix to multiply and let's change that factor to 1. Then let's look at the color dodge. And we can zoom in here 
And uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. Uh, if you zoom in further, you may find some imperfections that you might want to change, but I think this negative 0.12 number is looking pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a, another color ramp here, and I'm just going to reset it. And we're going to plug color into that factor this time here. And if we view that, we can just see it's a random assortment of different shades of gray there. And uh, so what I'm going to do then is add in two mix RGBs here. And I'm going to change this from color burn, uh, or two color burn and color dodge. And these second colors, they're actually both going to be going to white here, just like this. You can see this factor here on the color burn, if I turn this back and forth, it actually doesn't do anything. I'm just going to leave it at one. This color does matter though, so I'm going to leave that at white. But this color dodge here, um, if you turn this to the right, everything kind of gets white. And if you turn to the left, um, you know, everything is kind of that, that first color, um, just a little bit uh, lighter there. So uh, yeah, basically what I wanted to do is create something that controls this factor right here. So basically, if I bring in a value node and I plug it in here, uh, it works pretty well. It's pretty sensitive though, so you could either you know, hold down shift while you're adjusting it, or another way to do it is just to bring in a math node here and just divide this by uh, 10, like this here. So now this, instead of going between uh, 0 and 1, this slider goes between 0 and 10, so it's got a bit more leeway there. So yeah, that was my solution to that. Then uh, what I'm going to do is just move this stuff over a little bit here. What I was thinking is if I brought in, not a mix shader, but a mix RGB, and put it right here, and so uh, this one's going into color one here. If this is going into the factor, and I'm viewing this here, then basically as I turn this down, you can see that kind of stuff uh, disappears and appears like that. So it's a little sloppy right now. Uh, what I wanted to do is just to make it like, uh, you know, snap more to different intervals. And so the way that, uh, first of all, let's turn this to black. Um, that's what I should have done. So we can see it makes them disappear. Uh, but this isn't exactly what I want here, so I wanted to make it snap to intervals. And the way that I did that is by bringing in, I'm just going to turn that to zero, by bringing in a math node and placing it right here. And I'm going to change this to snap. And as far as I understand, what this does is it makes these uh, increments, uh, basically snaps to increments of, of whatever you have here. So if I move this up and down, this is going to change uh, you know this color dodge information that was coming out of here to either 0 or 0.5 or 1 or 1.5 you know multiples of this number so if I turn it up to 1 it should basically give me uh, multiples of 0 or 1 so now when I move this back and forth you can see it basically gives me 0 which is black or 1 which is white so when it gives me 0 let's look at this one for a second when it gives me 0 it's all black. And when it gives me one, you can see those white areas coming in. So the white is just showing this second slot here, which is black. And the black is showing that first slot, which is this image right here, which is all those circles. So hopefully that wasn't too complicated. Um, but if you play around with it, maybe it'll make it a bit more sense. You can move this back and forth here. You can change uh, this here, which gets rid of those uh, sliders there. Um, in fact, you, you could just unplug this and I'll get rid of those sliders there. Uh, no, that did not work. I guess you got to turn that up. Okay, yeah, just got to turn that up. So if you wanted to get rid of the sliders, you could, you know, just like this here. And then it's just black spots there. You could also change this to white if you wanted. And then that would get rid of those black areas there. Then you just kind of have more like the scatter note there. You know, this is kind of what I was going for originally. Um, but, uh, you know, it is a much less complicated version of Simon Tom's scatter. It's just, you know, my own creation. There we go. That's the setup I did. And hopefully that was easy for you guys to understand. But if it wasn't, you know, please feel free and ask any questions you have. You could change this around. Any of the shapes we made in the last couple of tutorials, you could put right here. And it would, you know, it should work the same. I tested it out and it was pretty easy to, to configure that way. If we wanted to change this number from four to eight as well, for instance, uh, we could get four circles in each spot and it would still work the same there as well. You just drag this back and forth and it just kind of disappears and appears at random. Uh, if you wanted a different configuration as well, say out of this Fornoy here, um, let's say you didn't want like this uh, setup right here, we could change this from 3D to 4D and if we change this W value, 
this kind of just gives us a different seed each time. So that's kind of cool too. Um, you know, an extra level of complexity there as well to play around with. So that's it. Uh, take care. Thanks for watching.